uh, as we mentioned previously, and we uh, will already show you uh, the basic functions of the point calculation, line calculation, and section calculations. Next, we will use a short second, uh, section to show you the other basic functions of the time uh, phase diagram module, uh, but, uh, such as the uh, phase projection, uh, mainly focus on a few focus on the projection and the sort of given simulation and how to combine these two functions. And the so the last section will be the uh, some, some advanced features of the pan phase diagram model. Okay, uh, let's move on. So you can hear as we mentioned previously, user can use PANDAT to calculate uh, the 3D diagram of any ternary system. This is the calculate uh, take the 3D diagram for the uh, ABC hypothetical system. Actually, the blue line, uh, blue lines are fixed boundaries, and red lines are the invariant invari invari reaction lines. And the also thermal lines are in green. However, the 3D diagram may become very complicated for the real ternary system. User may choose only one phase described in the ternary system to calculate a 3D uh, diagram. So actually this is a 3D diagram for the liquid phase only. So we usually uh, can pl plot uh, the, uh, the 3D diagram, uh, the projection of a certain phase onto a 2D surface we call the phase projection. So the projection of the liquid phase it's a mostly, uh, it's a most commonly used one. We call it liquid projection. For example, if you project the, the, this 3D uh, diagram of liquid to the 2D surface of this system, it will look like this. And the, uh, you can see also see the uh, uh, temperature variant is represented by the autosomal line. And this is a, a modal water line and different phase regions. After later, we will use a uh, liquid projection of a real ternary system to explain more about uh, its uh, application. So, so the, uh, next, uh, I will use a few examples to uh, first explore the uh, liquid projection of the magnetism alloy ternary system at magnetism rich region, and uh, also show you some uh, sort of simulation of this. Uh, uh, of a magnetism alloy using the uh, shell model, and uh, also show you how to combine these two the so liquid projection and the shell solidify uh, simulated solid fusion pass and show you, uh, show the useful application of these two function. So actually, here uh, we use the magnetism aluminum strontium ternary system as an example to demonstrate how the liquid projection is constructed. So one can see. That is the binary, uh, this three binary phase diagram, right? This is a, a ternary liquid projection of this ternary system. You can, back and see that the binary invariant reactions, as a red dashed line indicated, are projected onto the liquid projection on the boundary, which is one end of the mono world lines within this ternary phase region, as shown here. So let's focus on the magnetism bridge region and enlarge this uh, liquid projection as shown here. You can see here, actually the modal word line divided this diagram into several regions. Actually, which different region represents the primary phase will form, may form during solidification of the alloys located in this region. Okay, actually, also see the arrow. The arrow is added by ourselves, okay, and, and manually. The arrow along the modal word line, we just to indicate the temperature decreasing direction. So based on this information, we can know that we can also know this information based on the calculated isosomal lines, okay. Actually, the crossing point of the modal word line are invariant reaction point. You can see, actually, in the ternary system, uh, there are three. You live with there are three types of invariant reactions in the ternary system. Okay, so for the first type, we call the class one. That is ternary eutectic. You can see the three arrows 
are in the same direction for uh, point to this point. Uh, this point, which means the liquid will form three solid phase. This is called we call ternary catalytic reaction. Okay, for type two, we call that is quasi peritactic. So and then you can see that two anodes get in and one anode get out. Which means so the reaction will be liquid plus one solid and forms other two solid. The third type of the human reaction we call that is ternary peritactic. You can see there's one anode in and two anodes out. So that means liquid will plus two solid phase and form the other uh, solid phase. So the, uh, and you can see for this system, this system, the human reaction at the magnetic region are all type two. Okay. So next I will show you the solidification simulation of the alpha alloy. Okay. You know, actually in the phase diagram module, actually the, it includes two extreme uh, models, the shell model and the level root model. Actually, uh, for the uh, actually both model, uh, 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 describe some extreme cases. Uh, so you can use these two models to calculate the solution path of alloy without invoking complete kinetic calculation. Okay, so these two models both assume the complete mixing in the liquid, but in the solid the level rule. Uh, model also assumes the solute diffusivity is in infinity, so it completely makes it. Okay, why in the shell model assume there no diffusion in the solid phase? So actually, if based on the assumption, we can uh, usually we use if the solute uh, cooling rate is very slow, probably you can use the level rule get a better result. If the solute cooling rate is very fast, probably the shell model will give you better result. So we use the solute path simulation for the Y alloy. This is we use the shell model to the simulation. This is for the magnesium with four percent of uh, aluminum and four percent of strontium. Okay. And so the left figure is a typical solute path plot with a fraction of solid at the x axis. This fraction of solid for the total fraction of solid. Okay. And the temperature. Uh, uh, it's y axis. So we can see the solution path of this alloy start at this temperature. And the magnetic phase is a primary solution path from the during solidification. So with the evolution of the solidification process, the temperature uh, keeps decreasing and other solid phases form too. So in addition to the fraction uh, uh, to the FS was T plot. Okay, we can uh, make other plots using the data in the simulated table, uh, such as uh, the plot of temperature versus the fraction of each phase. So, so this here is a fraction is a fraction of each phase. It's not a, not the total fraction. Uh, this here is a total fraction, and this surface fraction is a fraction of each phase. Okay, so. Then we can know the evolution of this fraction during the solidification, right? From high temperature to low, te low temperature, what the fraction, this fraction will be, okay? So this is a, a shell simulation result. So next I will show you how to combine these two types of calculations. So this is uh, the calculated uh, leg subjection of this thermal system at the magnetic region. Okay, so as I mentioned, we can superimpose the calculated uh, solution path using a shell model in this plot as well. For example, for the four percent of uh, uh, aluminum, four percent of strontium. So you can the kind of solution path can be superimposed in this plot. You can see the primary phase is magnetism, and it will follow this. So each pass, then touches the monoway line, then keep going to this direction. Then form this phase, this phase, and maybe this phase. But here we need to emphasize, actually, this is a shell simulated solution pass will keep going to the 
fine end of the solidification. But in reality, you know, even there are some fraction of solid uh, liquid left, probably the solidification already stopped. So the real solidification path may stop in, uh, in between. It may not go to the far end of this, uh, the similarity sort of going to pass. Okay, but we do know. Uh, this is an uh, external result of a uh, result for this alloy. You can see the dark phase is a magnetic phase. And the big block is MG17 SR2 phase, is this phase. Then we, all, we also see a small fraction of the AR4 SR is this phase. But the uh, sorry, we do not find the, uh, the gamma phase. Uh, but uh, this can also tell us the solution path that's follow that's this direction. Okay. For now, we also can uh, do the simulation for an, uh, another alloy with 8% of aluminum and 1.5% of, of strong sheet. This is in bit percent. Okay. So this, you can see, the prime list is also back in the, right? But, uh, this for this alloy, it won't touch this modern line, so then no MG17 SR2 phase. So the second phase will be AR for SR and maybe small amount of the gum phase. Okay, so this is the experimental uh, result. Uh, you can see the this this, this uh, dark phase again is the magnetism matrix, and this is the uh, AR for SR. And for the gray phase, I'm not sure whether you can see it clear or not, but we do find a small fraction of the gray phase, look like here, which has been identified to be the gamma phase. So you can see this sort of in pass, it, uh, uh, agree well with our experimental observation. So here I just want to emphasize, so the, both the liquid objection and the sort of gear simulation uh, in the path phase diagram module uh, are very useful for help us to predict and understand the as cast macrostructure. Okay, actually this is pretty much uh, I would like to, to, to mention in the, uh, the second section. Actually uh, next, uh, Dr. Liao will uh, show us, give us some demonstration. Uh, before the demonstration, do you have any questions here? All right, if no question, uh, Dr. Yang, you can take over to do the demonstration. Okay, yeah. Okay. Now, as I as I'm going to demonstrate how to calculate the liquid uh, projection and uh, rescale this magnesium aluminum Johnson to uh, this magnesium color side. And then I will uh, use this uh, magnesium forward percent and the for, uh, forward percent of aluminum and the forward percent of Johnson as an example to show the certification pass on this uh, liquid projection. Okay. And during the certification simulation, I will first simulate, uh, use the shy model to do the, the certification simulation. And then I will show how to plot this uh, figure showing the phase fraction of each phase uh, during certification. Okay, now let's go to Panda here. First, we need to uh, load a database. Before we used is a high entropy database. Now we need use, to use a, a magnesium database. To click database, load TDB or PDB, and select this magnesium database. Okay. And then here we can select aluminum, magnesium, and the Johnson by holding the control key and use here. So now after the uh, database is loaded, then we start the phase fractions. 
in pan phase diagram here, menu, here has the option of phase projection to do the liquid projection calculation. Okay, click this. This is the interface for liquid projection calculation. Here, we need to set the condition of the x-axis and the y-axis. And here, we need to make sure the unit right now is uh, atomic percent, and we need to change to weight percent. Click option, change the unit to weight percent, and click OK. For the x-axis, we want to change it to aluminum, and the y-axis change to strontium. Here shows the target phase for the liquid earth projection. The target phase is liquid. Actually, we can also set the target phase as other phases to do the phase projection of different phases. Okay. Here we have an option is show result for subsystems. If we click this, then when we do the liquid projection for the total system, the liquid lines of each uh, of uh, three bi binary subsystems will also be calculated. And here we show the 3D diagram. Here we have an option to do the other thermal lines. If we select this and set a temperature interval, then that we'll do the other thermal line calculations. Yeah, to save time, here I, I do not select these other thermal line calculations. Okay, users, you can try after that. Then, after all the conditions are uh, properly set, and click OK to do the uh, next projection calculations. Yeah, this is the calculus result. Now this shows the 3D diagram of this liquid surface. We can see this boundary line shows the liquid line of the binary systems, and those are the uh, univariant uh, lines of the liquid. And this is the typical liquid projection of magnetic aluminum Johnson. And right now, this is in the whole composition range from zero to 100. We want to analyze at the magnetum rich corner. Uh, how do we rescale to this magnetum rich corner? If we click here in this scale, there's no options for the triangular plot. So that is first, we need to change the triangular plot to rectangular plot by set it at force. After set to the rectangular plot, then we can see this uh, minimum and the maximum options to change to scale the x axis and the y axis. Here we choose x maximum as 40 and the y maximum as 40 as well. And we can also change the increment to 5 for both axes. And then after rescale, then we click the triangular plot to true. Then it will go back to triangular plot again. So here I want to mention is when we rescale from the uh, rectangular plot, in this case, if you want to go back to triangular plot 
after the rescaling, so the the uh, range of the x axis and the y axis must be the same. Here, both are 40. So, for example, if they are different, for example, I said this is 30, and then I try to transform to use this triangular plot, then Panda will give an error message showing the triangular plot must be in equal range for x axis and the y axis. Okay. Here, then we go back to 40 and set as true again. So this is the liquid projection in magnetism rich color. Now we can label the primary phase regions. Click label from the graph menu, label here, and here, and here. And this is the ternary gamma phase. Okay, and then we can also add an error. This line indicate to this this phase region. So now this is the calculation of the Lictus projection. Yeah. Do you have any questions before I move to the certification simulation? Okay. Now, for to do certification simulation, here we have this toolbar. This is for the certification simulation. And also we can go to the pan phase diagram, choose certification simulation here. This is the interface for certification uh, setting. The alloy, what we choose is 400 of uh, four weight percent of aluminum four weight percent of strontium, and the magnetism is the balance. So we can right click and then show this window and click yes to replace the value with reminder. So now the value of magnesium is shown here. And here it shows the two modes of certification in pan phase diagram module. One is the shire model and the other is the naval rule. You know? And we also have another module, is pan certification module, which can consider more complicated simulation conditions, including the cooling rate and the back diffusion uh, of the primary phase. Okay. Now below here, there is an option. It's set simulation from liquid surface. Now it's selected. The, then, which means Pandat will automatically find the uh, liquid temperature and start the certification simulation. And this is end when no more liquid, means Pandat will end certification simulation when it finds the solid temperature. If we unselect this one, unselect the liquid then we can set a temperature here to let Panda to start simulation at this setting temperature. Okay, if I unselect it here, then we can send an end temperature here to end the certification simulation. For this demonstration, I use uh, both, select both and to uh, let Panda to start and end the certification from the liquidus to solidus. Then click OK. But this is the uh, certification curve of this alloy. And the shows the temperature versus uh, solid total fraction of the solid phase. Okay, if we put the cause on this line. It shows the name of the solid phase, which means in this region, the HCP phase uh, solidified from the liquid phase. And here is a, if press F2 to label, this is the HCP plus magnesium Johnson phase. And here is HCP plus uh, aluminum Johnson phase. And here 
is HTP and the uh, ternary gamma phase. Okay, now this shows the uh, total solid phase fractions. If we want to show uh, each phase at a different temperature during solidification, how can we do that? Okay, now actually in Pandat, those data have already calculated in this default table. If we double click this default and open this default table, it shows he, this is the temperature. FS is a solid fraction, FIR is a liquid fraction. And here is F total add is also is add this is for liquid and this at HCP is for HCP phase. So these are the phase fraction of each phases. So we want to plot a diagram showing and the evolution of each phase at different temperature during certification. Then we first select the temperature at the X axis and hold the control key, then select all these phase fractions and click this icon to create a new graph or from this table, create a graph. Now we can see this shows uh, the fraction of each phase at a different temperature. We can also see here, some phase is only a very small amount. So the linear scale cannot show those phase amount very clearly. In Pandat, we can also change the linear scale to log scale. Click this property here, you can find axis Y log scale. Right now it is false and click two, it shows the log scale that we can rescale to minus four. Now this shows the uh, phase fraction of each phase at different temperature using the log scale. Now we add legend, okay, here. And we can also add the phase names next to each phase. So click this add text or from graph add text, then we can edit the text here for the red line is for the HCP phase. And then we can change the color to the red at the HCP phase. And then we can add text for the green for the magnesium 17 Johnson two phase. Here, the, the 17, we can use the subscript here. And for the true, also use this subscript. Click OK. And then similarly, we can add the liquid is blue. And the aluminum force Johnson phase is for this yellow phase. And also the last one is this, we can set at the gamma phase, we can use a Greek number as a gamma phase with a G in the Greek number for the this gamma phase. Then we can delete this legend, okay? So that is for the certification simulation. So we mentioned that we can also add the certification path on this liquidus projection. How can we do that? We first did the certification, uh, the liquidus projection calculation here. This is the, for this projection calculation. And then we did the certification simulation for the that alloy. So now we can combine the certification path 
from this stratification calculation to this liquid projection. Uh, actually, the liquid projection, it means the uh, composition of the liquid during stratification, the evolution of the composition of the liquid during stratification. So we wanted to add the certification pass on this uh, figure. So we first need to uh, output the composition of the liquid in this certification calculation. So this table, right click, add a new table to output the uh, liquidus composition. So we go down here. We have an option, it's the W star at star is showing the weight fraction of components in, in the phase. So this shows the composition of the phase. So we can simply drag and drop to the right. For the first star means components. So here we need all three elements. For the right, the second star means the phases. So this we only lead the liquid, so select liquid phase, then click OK. Now we see the composition of this liquid phase is showing here. And then we can add this data onto this liquid projection to show the certification path. So double click this and open this liquid projection, then click once, single click this table, generated table, and to select this table here, then you can see the property of this table. Here, then we can select the aluminum at liquid and drag and drop at, what, at the same what we did in the control line, okay, and then release, and then select the Johnson, hold the control key, drag and drop, then we see the certification path is superimposed on this liquid projection. In the previous as a server section, we add the, the data is from the same calculation, but here we see this is from the liquid projection. And this calculation, this result is from the certification uh, simulation. That is because we Pandat we, is an integrated workspace. All those data can be combined together and used together. Okay, so that is uh, the demonstration for certification and liquid projection. Is there any questions for this part? Okay, if no questions, let's move on, on to the uh, last section of this training class. Actually, in previous sections, uh, we explained the basic functions uh, of the pine phase diagram module, such as a line at a point calculation, line calculation, second calculation, phase projection, and solidification simulation. Here in the last section, we'd like to show you some advanced features of the uh, pine phase diagram module, uh, such as the contour line, the append database and user defined database property, and a high throughput uh, calculation. Actually, we already show you uh, the control line application, right? The phase fraction and the density control line. But here, uh, we would like to emphasize that one can plot uh, control lines of all kinds of uh, available properties on the phase diagram, such as here, the surface tension, viscosity, electrical uh, conductivity, so this is very useful for LL design to select an alloy composition with the design structure and other required physical properties. So 
Uh, so we are, since we already showed before, so here we just to uh, uh, emphasize a little bit here. Okay. So the other advanced feature we call it a append database or user defined properties. So which allow user to append a customer made database to an original database for various type of basis and system properties. Here we also just use two examples show you what we did. And this is just two uh, examples uh, of user defined properties. This is why is the thermal connectivity and why is electrical resistivity. Actually, one can uh, uh, use these two user defined properties as append to the original thermal database, then you can make uh, the uh, property calculations like what we show here. The lines are the calculated result and the symbols are explained result. And here, uh, for the uh, another advanced feature of the pan phase diagram module is high super calculation. But here we need to emphasize that for the high super calculation, it's not only for uh, for the pan phase diagram module, uh, but also for the uh, pan presentation and the pan certification as well. Okay, so the high super calculation uh, allow you to perform thousands of calculations altogether, and also uh, allow you to to set up criterion and to do data mining. So actually, why we, we would like to do the high super calculation, right? I think it's goal, you know, it's the goal of the ICME and MGI is to accelerate the material development by design. And uh, also for the high volume development or other alloys, you need to search the potential alloys in a wild multi-dimensional multi, uh, composition space. And some other advanced uh, 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 usage, such as for the machine learning or the artificial intelligence. And if you want to predict the material properties, all this need uh, millions of data, right? So uh, the, the, the uh, requirement or the need uh, millions of calculation at various compositions are hard to measure. You cannot do it by one by one manually. So then we develop the high throughput calculation function, which allow user to perform thousands of calculations together. You can, can also do some, uh, uh, as we mentioned previously, you can also do data mining with the defined criteria. Okay. Next, I just would like to use an uh, example show you the valuable application of the high throughput calculation for the development of lightweight and high performance hyperloid. So inspired by the development of novel uh, ferritic uh, super alloys containing a disordered DCC matrix with ordered B2 or the L21 precipice, which showing very good creep resistance is at elevated temperature. And the the, the density are relatively low. So this is a collaborative uh, uh, a collaboration uh, work with uh, Professor Liao in University of Tennessee. So we designed and fabricate uh, the hydrogen alloys uh, with the BCC matrix and L21 uh, precipitates. This can dual phase manufacture within the aluminum, chrome, iron, manganese, and the titanium uh, system for high temperature application. This is a flow chart uh, showing the high slope calculation uh, steps and the screen criteria. So for this, for high temperature application, so we need the melting temperature is greater than 1250 degrees C. This is the rule we define, okay. And for, pre for precipitation strengthening, of the L21 precipice within the BCC matrix. So we need to ensure the identified alloys have a single BCC, the matrix phase at high temperature, and only the BCC and L21 phase at the low temperature without forming other uh, intermetallic phases, which may have uh, detrimental uh, effects, okay. So based on this criteria, and we perform uh, uh, three rounds of high calculations. So 
This figure shows the composition distribution of the identified alloys at each step. You can see actually for the for these big four figures, all the x axis are the aluminum uh, uh, composition, and the y axis are the composition of all other four elements. So the for the we uh, in each figure we have three different areas for the green area one, the blue area two, and the red area three. Actually, for the area one, we'll meet the criterion here, criterion one. Okay, and area two will meet the criterion one and two. And for area three, we'll meet all three criteria. So finally, eight alloys work screen out out of three more than three thousand alloys. And uh, this identified the alloys was then fabricated and uh, experimentally investigated. Actually, from the X, uh, XRD and TM study, and to verify the manufacture of these alloys, and agree with our thermodynamic predictions. We also did a mechanical property test on one of these uh, alloys, as shown here. Uh, the uh, red star is the uh, alloys uh, uh, of one of our identified alloys. And uh, this is a compression uh, kind of a test for the yellow stress. Actually, you can see here, actually the yellow stress of this alloy is excellent, especially at lower temperatures, right? And the density of this alloy is only 6.5. So which is uh, much lower than traditional super alloy or other alloys. And also give us more room to further improve its mechanical property as a lightweight, high performance structural material. So we just use this example to show you the valuable application of the high the calculation in the pine phase diagram model. So actually this is the last section we'd like to uh, uh, in this training class. And next, I think uh, Dr. Liang will uh, show you a uh, demonstration how to do the high stroke calculation. Uh, before demonstration, any question here? All right, if no question, sit down, can you take over to show the demonstrate how to do the high speed configuration? Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Now I will show to show how to do the high speed calculation of uh, this alloy. And in, in the real alloy uh, design, we used the step is 5% from zero to 50% of these uh, five component high entropy alloy. But for this demonstration, I, to simplify it, it's used the 10%. If we're with a 5% of step, then it is more than the several thousand calculations. And I reduced to 10%, it will be 121 calculations. Then I will use the same strategies to do for the certification first, and then to do the point calculation after the result analysis. Okay, so now let's do that step by step. This is what we did the calculation before. So before Haslip calculation, we always suggest user to create a new workspace and save the workspace. So yeah, so first I can save this workspace and demo. And then I can create a new workspace. It's from here, create a new workspace. And then save the current workspace before the calculation. Save, save demo HTC. Okay, that is because normally for hash loop calculation, we take uh, thousands of calculations. We don't know what will be happened during the calculation. So if something happened, for example, the software crash or computer shut down, and then we saved this workspace and all the calculation, calculated result before that problem have already automatically saved in this workspace. So 
later on when you turn on your computer, you don't need to repeat all the calculations uh, before. So that is the advantage. You always save a workspace before your calculations. So, so next step is note the database and from databases, node database. This, we use the Haskell database again, open it. Now here you see the uh, component next window is not pop up. That is because this database has already noted in the memory of this Panda software in our previous uh, simulate, uh, demonstration. Now, if we see here, this is the information of this database, and this shows the has interview database is selected with the underline. And if we open this component right now, this aluminum, these five components are highlighted, which means these five co components are selected. That is our previous calculation. But in this high super calculation, we need another five components. We need to select component, click database, select component. Now this window will come out again. So we can change to the five components for the high entropy for this high super calculation, which has manganese and uh, Titanium. Okay, then click OK. So after select all those components, we can start hash throughput calculation. The hash throughput calculation function is below the batch menu here. That is because the hash throughput calculation is not only uh, can be used in PAM phase diagram module, it can also be used for other modules like uh, PAM precipitation and the PAM certification. So we click this has throughput calculation. The first we choose is certification and uh, okay. Now you can see this interface is very similar to the certification simulation. But here in the certification simulation, you can only set one composition. Here you can set a composition range from the start to the end and with a step. Here we said is, yeah, before we set the conditions, we also need to be very careful about the unit. Right now is the weight percent, but actually we want to use atomic percent. Click option to change the unit to atomic percent and set the start uh, composition of aluminum from 10 to 50 with step of four, which means it's calculated four steps between 10 to 50. So all the others are from 10 to 50 with the number of step is four. And for the last, we the start and the end are the same, but for the number of steps, we use a minus one to show this as a balance, okay? And the next is the certification mode. Here, this example, we use level rule. So now all those in condition are set. And here, yes, um, we set the composition uh, range and the steps is from here. And we can also export the alloy composition to a file. We click export, and then we can export it to demo certification. Okay. And then I will explain that file later because this we have another option is import alloys. We can export this composition and next time, and you can, you don't need to set from here. You can simply use this import alloy and to select that file. 
In the next step of the point calculation, I will show how to use this import alloy function. Okay, now we can start the uh, calculations. Yeah, when the all the this is 121 calculation, it will take several minutes. And during this calculation, I will show you that how to uh, develop that alloy composition and uh, how to use that alloy composition file. I can open a, another uh, Pandas workspace and to use this fun this open file. And here we can open this DAT composition file, what we just saved. This is a uh, typical uh, text file. This is the composition file, what we just saved for our HTC calculation. The first is the uh, element, and the second line is the composition, uh, is the, the unit, and below are the compositions. So we see, if we go down here, it in total is 123. So we have two lines for the title and the unit. So that is 121 calculations. So these are the uh, calculations for the compositions uh, for those uh, calculations. And we can set this condition from the interface, but if we know how to do develop this composition file, it is much more flexible. So you don't need to have to be, have a certain pattern to design this alloy composition. You can do any random alloy composition or you develop any other functions based on uh, other rules for those alloy compositions. For example, is we, we uh, will be used is another composition file for the point calculation. I have developed that before the demonstration. So we can see this is used for the point calculation. Because if, if we look at these rules again, if we look at these rules again, is we first do the non calculation, uh, the certification simulation, and uh, we uh, to analyze the result and found several alloys to meet these rules. And then we do this second type of calculation. So those alloys are no uh, alloy patterns, what we can set from the interface. So then we need to use the alloy composition file and to set the alloy composition from this analysis result and also set the temperature at this 0 0.8 uh, temperature of the solid temperature. So that is the second step of hazard calculation. And this is the file what I prepared uh, before the demonstration. So these actually are the uh, analysis result of the alloy composition. And this is the temperature with the start and end temperature is the same, is the 0 0.8 uh, solid temperature. So then we can develop this uh, composition and temperature file, then we can uh, import into the hash ripple calculations. So this is how to develop this uh, composition files. Now let's look at the calculations. Yeah, now if you have any questions, we can also have a, a discussion.
Now all the calculations are done. Here is 120, we have a zero. Here we see the total number of calculation is 121. The total calculation time is three minutes and uh, it takes some more times for save the data. Okay, now we can start the result analysis. Click batch calculation and the result analysis. Now we choose the target workspace. We choose this. This is the demo HTC, what we calculate here, and then continue. Now we see these are the properties in the calculated result. And so we don't need to analysis all those properties. We can select or yeah, we before we analysis, we can have a look at the rule again. That rule, th this rule one is the solid temperature is higher than 1,250 degrees C. And the FCC equal to, the fraction of FCC equal to one at the solid temperature, which means it is a, B, a BCC, it's a BCC single phase at the solid temperature. So now we can set these two rules in this HTC result analysis. So we need to ana analyze the temperature, the F total of BCC and the alloy compositions that are the information what we need. So here we can set the rules. So for the uh, BCC, and we can click this to add this information here and then tap in this is equal to one. And, and another condition is the temperature higher than to 1,250 1, degrees C. And here, I don't need a empty row between the result and click analysis. Now we see these are the alloys which satisfy our rule one with temperature. The solid temperature is higher than uh, 1,250 and uh, the F total BCC is equal to one. The temperature is higher than that value. Okay. So this is the uh, result report. And for this result report, we can easily export to an Excel file or to a text file. For example, we export to an Excel file. Now here, this is the composition and the solid temperature and the F total of BCC is equal to one. So the next step is we want to calculate uh, these alloys at the 0 0.8 of the solidus temperature and the multiply this solidus so then we can easily to get this result and to produce a, a composition file that is what I produced here so this format is also, you don't need to worry about, about this format. You don't remember it because we can use the output from the interface setting. Okay, now let's go to the second step of a point calculation is to do this. to do this point calculation at 0 0.8, which use this composition and the temperature fire. Okay, we start a new workspace again, create a new workspace, okay, and then save this workspace as demo HTC point. Here we 
node database. That is because now I use another uh, Pandas soft uh, program. It's the same, but we need to load the database again. To use chromium, manganese, iron, manganese, and titanium. Okay. And okay. And then we start the hash loop calculation. This time it's for point calculation. Click OK. And here, this is the interface for point calculation. And as we mentioned, we don't need to uh, set, and also we cannot set the conditions from this because the composition of the not analyzed result is cannot follow any uh, composition pattern. So we use this import. And here, click import, select this file, which I just show. And then there are 43 calculations. And then run the hash loop calculation for these point calculations. So as it's also the same is for the the point calculation fire. You can also output from that that interface which I did not show on that one. I think here, yeah, this is the one what I did for the uh, certification calculation. And if we want to save the condition, the composition file for the point calculation, here we can simply say say, say any value what you you can to get get the template of this file, and then you can uh, replace the data based on your own data. Okay. Uh, maybe I can see. Okay. And then I can set one, then it will add the temperature option. Okay, okay. say point. Then we op open that point file. Here, this is the output point file. So you know this format is here, and then you can replace the compositions, use your own composition file and to keep this format. Okay. So now all the point calculation, HTT of point calculation has finished here. Now we can do the second step of analysis is to sh show the BCC and the L21 phase together are the equal to one. So which means the, these are these two phase region. And at the same time, the phase fraction of the L21 phase should be higher than 0 0.05 and less than 0 0.5. So this is the rule for the second step. Now we use batch calculation for result analysis and choose the target. This time we it's for this point. Okay. And then continue. Here we need to set the result is for the BCC insert and the L21 phase and 21 phase equal one. And this L21 phase should be less than 0 .0, 0 0.5. And this L21 phase is more than 0 0.05. Okay, this is the rule for the second step. Then click analysis. We can see after these two rounds of screening, only two alloys satisfy these conditions. 
and this is two phase region and uh, the the first fractions yeah well, yeah this is a temperature this temperature is uh, 0 0.8 the temperature of the that the solid temperature of that alloy okay so that all for the those has to put calculation and the demonstration. So is there any questions about this has to put calculations? Um, there are a couple of questions on the chat session. One is how to improve fast or back diffusion of elements in cell model, uh, we cannot do that, right? Yeah, actually, you also include the back diffusion. You know, you can use our pan certificate model. Uh, we also include the back diffusion effect of elements in the shell model. Okay. Actually, I'm uh, not sure whether you mean the fast diffusion uh, element. Probably you ought to do that. Uh, we need to consider the parallel equilibrium then combine the shell model. Actually, we will do that uh, in the future. Okay. Yeah, so fast diffusion elements such as like uh, uh, interstitial elements yeah. like a carbon or nitrogen or whatever. Yeah. Okay. The other question is, do you have any demonstration of thermal conductivity and the electrical resistivity? So on the slide. We didn't prepare the demonstration for that, right? Because... Yeah. Uh, Actually, uh, no, uh, just let me show the screen for a while. Okay. Okay, I can stop sharing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just quickly try to explain uh, uh, how to do this. Actually, as I mentioned, actually Panda alone user to define uh, the uh, any property of a phase in a database that can be expressed as this kind of function. You know, if you are familiar with a thermodynamic database development, you know, this expression is very similar to that of the Gibbs energy expression. You now from the pure element to the interaction, interaction of binary and the high order system. Yeah, actually for the, uh, some, uh, for the properties we showed before, either some collectivity or electro, uh, uh, electrical resistivity, actually all defined, all developed by in this rule. Okay, actually we, what we show is for the single axis only. So you have different elements. So just put here and the interaction between binaries and the terminals. So in this way, you can develop. Um, did you share your screen? Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah, just a little quick show my screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, can you see my screen now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. This this is uh, this, uh, what, what I mentioned. So, uh, the panda alone uses to define any pre property. Uh, use an expression like this. Okay. Here, just uh, for the pure element. Okay. This part is for the interaction of the uh, uh, binary or high order systems. So, if you know how to develop a some some dynamic database, okay, for this property database, it's very similar and maybe even much easier than, than the thermodynamic database development. Okay, this is way we develop uh, the phase property uh, using the user defined property function in the panda uh, panda phase diagram module. Trying do of you course. have a database? Trying do you have a database for uh, thermal conductivity or electrical resistivity? You can do a quick calculation. Oh uh, yeah. Um, yeah, maybe I can I can introduce just take this uh, opportunity and I can introduce our help. Actually, in our example uh, photo, we have uh, uh, some conductivity calculation. Oh, okay, I, okay. I can simply run um, that batch file and to show the uh, some, some conductivity calculation. So, trying yeah. to let Soma share the screen. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, and take this opportunity, I want to 
uh, introduce our help menu here. Yes, in our help menu, we have uh, many resources to help uh, beginner users to get use uh, start uh, Panda software. We have a Panda tutorial video. If you click here, then you can go to our website to show in the uh, tutorial videos, including some Panda basic operations. And here are some examples for PanFace diagram modules. We are going to add more uh, videos to introduce other modules, okay? And uh, here, we also have a, a Panda online help. Here, uh, in this online help, you can search your questions here. And uh, for this user guide, and we have introduced the functions of this uh, software. You can download the PDF file here. And we also have an example book here. You can also download the PDF and all these examples showing how to use Panda step by step. Okay, so these are the uh, for the files and the tutorials. And here, if in this pan help, and if you open this Panda exam book path, uh, yes, here. In this folder, we have a lot of resources to help users to develop database and all the calculations, batch files. And those, those files are all is used in this, this is the, the PDF file of this example book. Okay, so in this example book, we have many examples. You can follow these examples step by step and all the files uh, needed in this example are all in this folder. Besides this example book, up here we have another folder, it's example folder. In this example folder, we also contains many other files, which is uh, mentioned or used in Pandas menu. For example, that is the simultaneity. We have this is included in this user-defined pro property. Here, we have a batch file to calculate the subjectivity of the HCP phase in alum aluminum magnesium and this to calculate the FCC in, in this system. And we also have a database for, uh, yeah, this is a database for some conductivity. I can open it from uh, Pandas. Okay. Can simply copy and paste here. You can see this is the database of the semiconductivity. These are defined functions for actually what we defined is the thermal resistivity and then use the semiconductivity as the uh, receptacle of the thermal uh, resistivity. So this is the database. And for the calculations, we have this batch file. For example, this one. This is contains the conditions of this calculation, which is the type is the non-calculation and the database is the original database. And we also have a function is append database, which because of time, we did not demonstrate how to append database here. Okay, so this is the batch file. What we want to do a simple calculation is to run this batch file to from this batch calculation, batch run, and then we simply select this batch file. Oh, oh this is the, I think that is the data, the data file. Oh, I realized that. That is because this is in uh, C, the, this folder is in C. This panda cannot read this DAT file because this this file I I used for comparison. So 
so that is uh, calculated before, and then it cannot read from here. Maybe an, another easy way is I just copy this folder, not in C, but uh, in another place to run it again. For example, I just put it on on this demo and training. Okay, to put it here. Oh, oops. Where are you said? Yeah. Okay. I can simply run this batch fire and to run this again. Then now you can see this is a calculated result and compare with the experimental data. Okay, this is for the semiconductivity calculation. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so I think someone question, already explained actually what's the format uh, of the, uh, how of user defined property database. Probably you can follow the examples we provide and get more information. If any questions, you can uh, also uh, email us and let us know. Yeah, I think uh, it's almost three hours. Um, I hope uh, it's worth your time. So you learn something from this uh, Panda training. Uh, if you have any uh, further questions and uh, comments, suggestions, uh, please, uh, feel free to send us an email, uh, info at computerm.com. Um, and also, uh, as we mentioned at the beginning of the training class, we are going to offer trainings for other modules uh, in the next uh, couple of months. So please uh, watch out for the announcement uh, in the next couple of months. All right, thank you very much everybody for uh, attending the training. I hope uh, it's useful to you. Thank you.